The subtle arcs along the sides of the structure suggest the interlocking circles of the vesica pisces, which represents the female genitals. Perhaps not surprisingly, and just like the Washington Monument, Coit Tower symbolizes the act of coitus, or the sacred union of Isis and Osiris. Okay, just feel like doing some geometry, and and it's really um, geometry is just like pretty rocking basic constructions of say and as with all things we begin with the vesica and it's just first circle and the second circle is on the edge of the first okay now we can Hancock and Bival have well documented in their book Talisman how Thoth's knowledge base was passed down through the Gnostics, Manichees, Bogomils, and Cathars. All were ruthlessly wiped out by the Catholic Church. Any remaining followers were then completely annihilated by the Inquisition. Thankfully, the popes weren't entirely successful in instituting a permanent Dark Age, because a century after the Inquisition, Cosimo de' Medici recovered the Corpus Hermetica, which was written in the first century in Alexandria. This older stream of hermetic knowledge that escaped the burning of the Library of Alexandria actually fueled the Italian Renaissance, and then went underground in secret societies that persist to this day. The Golden Gate is neither golden, nor is it literally a gate. Instead, it's the red bridge built the same year as Treasure Island. Known throughout the world as an engineering marvel and symbol of San Francisco, it also represents the fulfillment of manifest destiny, the 19th century belief in the inexorable expansion of the United States from sea to shining sea. Here's a 19th century painting depicting the goddess Columbia leading settlers westward in an allegorical representation of manifest destiny. The Golden Gate is actually a concept from, you guessed it, ancient Egypt. Are you seeing the pattern here? They believe the Golden Gate was the threshold souls must pass after death on their way to the Duat. You might be interested they also spoke of a silver gate, guarded by Isis, the great mother of the sun. Souls passing through the Silver Gate on their journey from the Divine Source are incarnated upon the Earth. I think Treasure Island represents the Silver Gate guarded by Isis. Its seven sides certainly have her number. Perhaps the gift of incarnation itself is the treasure. The soul journeys westward like the American settler and passes over Alcatraz, one of the world's most famous prisons. This fits with the Cathar belief that the body is the prison of the soul. All the while angels, this is Angel Island, fly above in a higher dimension. Angel Island is a state park and has incomparable views of the bay. The adjacent peninsula is the town of Belvedere, one of the highest income places in the United States. There may be a few angel investors in Belvedere who take in the incredible scenery and its symbolism. After doing time upon the earth, the soul passes through the Golden Gate to meet its destiny in the Duat. Now we're way out there. Let's fly back to Giza and get back down to earth. The, pyra the pyramids of Giza are said to be located in the middle of the earth. Jim Allison is an independent researcher who's uncovered some mind-blowing geometry. Here he's taken the Vesica Pisces and laid it over the circle of the earth. Giza is at this point, equidistant from the North Pole and the center of the Earth. Quite a central location when you see it this way. 
in one of the oldest surviving hermetic fragments called the Kore Cosmu, or Virgin of the World, Isis has this to say to her son Horus. But the right holy land of our ancestors lies in the middle of the earth, and the middle of the human body is the sanctuary of the heart, and the heart is the headquarters of the soul, and that, my son, is the reason why men of this land are more wise. It could not be otherwise, seeing they are born and bred upon earth's heart. The Heart of Egypt Distance along the Nile, we come to Dashur, site of the lesser-known Red and Bent Pyramids. Egyptologists claim these were contemporaneous with the Great Pyramid of Giza. I think the sacred geometry of both pyramids was correctly deciphered at world-mysteries.com. The pyramids at Dashur hold keys to macrocosm and microcosm. First of all, the Red Pyramid isn't as steep as the Great Pyramid. Its face proportions match this red triangle within a pentagram. Tilting up four such triangles until they meet defines the pyramid and its slope. The pentagram is a powerful magical talisman that was a symbol of the Pythagorean school. The number five is associated with the microcosm, with life and in the growth of living things. Number five is associated with the microcosm, with life and in the growth of living things. The adjacent bent pyramid is the only pyramid with two slope angles. The lower slope is steeper than the Great Pyramid, and its face proportions match this blue triangle within a hexagon. Tilting up four such triangles until they meet defines the pyramid's lower slope. The upper slope matches the Red Pyramid so it's red triangles within pentagons again here. So what's up with all the hexagons and pentagons? It has been said that the great enigma of alchemy is the mystery between macrocosm and microcosm. The word alchemy actually, I believe relating six to five, is the essential key encoded at Dashur. Renaissance master Albrecht Dürer made this drawing in his course in the art of measurement with compasses and a ruler. Everything emerges from the Vesica Pisces. The great enigma of alchemy is the mystery between macrocosm and microcosm. is often depicted as a hunter with a sword between his legs. Dan S. Ward of Alexandria.org says, No male wears a sword between his legs, and very few hunters carry a sword. Perhaps a more appropriate description of that which is hanging down below Orion's waist is that of a phallus. The area of Osiris's phallus contains the Orion Nebula, one of the most studied regions of space, because it is an incredibly generative area, 
where stars are continually being formed. How appropriate. No male wears a sword between his legs, and very few hunters carry a sword. Perhaps a more appropriate description of that which is hanging down below Orion's waist is that of a phallus. The area of Osiris's phallus, Orion Nebula, one of the most In the Queen's Chamber point directly to the star Sirius in the south. Orion and Sirius represented Osiris and his consort Isis to the ancient Egyptians. of Osiris's phallus contains the Orion Nebula, one of the most studied regions of space because it is an incredibly generative area where stars are continually being formed. How appropriate! 